road according to Murdoch. What's that? No, he saw my light. Better not be Troop, troop, troop B. Matthew Pratt, the dude chick. The dude chick. Don't answer anything. You okay? You all right? You lost? It's uh, 7321. Who's that? Oh, it's our buddy. Hey, what's going on? What, once a month I'm seeing you now? I know, oh, you're in that? the Charger tonight, man. You guys all right tonight? Yeah, we saw you parked up on, off the side. We didn't want to stop on the highway. Uh, so we wanted to walk through the grass and catch up to you, but you took off on us. Yeah, we parked on the grass. Now, uh, is there a, a statue saying that you guys have to have parking lights on, or can you be phantom like that? Well, I don't know. Can you show me a statue where we can? Well, I, was, I was asking you. you. You're the law. You should know the law, man. You get oathed. I don't take an oath to know that shit. Set, I just man. make I just make sure you guys are accountable. You didn't have your seatbelt on? Huh? You didn't have your seatbelt on? You just put it on now? Shame on you, man. I just got off. And I'm just oh. I'm messing with you. At least it's not 30 below tonight. Uh -huh. Hey, I uh, appreciate you letting uh, Severin go. He's from Pennsylvania. Oh, two weeks ago. Yeah, that was really nice of you. I didn't realize it was you because you all bundled up that night. Yeah. They're like, hey, dude, how you doing? At least it's not 30 below. I don't know. Hey, hey, we're not assholes. I know. I don't know. Oh, what you guys, guys, you guys are I know fine. I know what you guys are doing, but we're we're just like regular Joes like you. We got a family and shit. We're not out there just fucking around. Yeah. I just, I have a question though. I know Hillsborough had like three of them up here earlier. I have no idea um, what's going on with that one. They're not on our channel. I don't understand why. They're focusing all the attention on the on the highway. Why aren't you patrolling your streets, making sure people aren't getting broken into and shit? No, we do. We do, but after a while, you start getting tired. You have to go out on the highway, and uh, that's where people are. Yeah. This is this is, used to be the most dangerous uh, highway. It's crosses everywhere. Huh? It's crosses all yeah. take all through Keene, yeah. from here all the through Keene. Kind of focus at later at night. Try to get the people that are drunk driving all over. We just had an officer. We had an officer die right down there. How long ago? Uh, it's probably six, seven years ago. Oh yeah. Get uh, doing a traffic stop or? No, he's riding his own personal motorcycle. Oh. And wow. That's that's not cool. Any stadies in the area? Well, because they fucked with us. They, they want to stir up bees' nests, we could do the same thing. Is Murdoch or Pratt on? Uh, and, and I admit, I was wrong about Matthew Pratt being a chick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how's, uh, how's your uh, buddy, the one that was uh, chit-chatting with us that night? The one in the SUV? Bald-headed guy. Tell him, I, tell him I said hi. That video has like over six thousand hits. Yeah, actually more than that, right? The Murdoch, the flashlight war. Yeah, it might be getting close to seven. Yeah. Yeah. So where does this does this lead right into town, or? That goes into where? Oh, that goes into where, New Hampshire? Oh, the big landmark case town. Should hit there some night. Yeah, we should. We should go back there and start harassing them guys. Man. I've never cop locked there. It was Carla Garek from Free State Project, part of that deal. She won a big, nice check from them. Yeah, we just had an issue in Concord earlier. Videotaping a traffic stop, and they did exactly what Murdoch did. Get away from my car, you're interfering. No, I'm not. I'm taking your plate number. Leave me alone. The whole big thing about when you guys came up is... Well, you guys came to us. 
Well, you're not. You didn't drop your flashlight, so you're concerned yeah. on who's coming up on us because there's cops getting killed all over. When you place look at the video, stops. Murdoch had his flashlight up. He put it up way after. Huh? He, he put his light way up at way after uh, because Murdoch had his in our eyes. Yeah. Yeah, I put mine up because he had his in my eyes. I, I understand you were trying to tell us who you were, but we still don't know who you are. Well, I mean. We were reacting the same way you guys did to us. I don't know about you. You guys are kind of Well, Com Comerford... Um, we, don't, we don't know who you are. We don't yeah. know if you're out to shoot us because that's what's going on here. Well, nobody's out here shooting cops. Not, not here, but other states. Come on, man. Everything that's going on, we don't know who you all, are. All I know is cops killed 3,800 people in two and a half years unarmed. That's all I know. We should be more afraid than you guys are. 275 cops lost their lives in the past two years. Do you know how many innocent lives were killed by cops? Yeah. Well, Doubled that. That's agreed to disagree. Well, that, that's just a fact. That's a, that's a factual, factual figure. And, and we're not counting pets. Pets? Yeah. Something like, like 15,000 dogs in like three years have been shot. Innocent dogs, huh? Dogs, yeah. Yeah, there's tons of videos. They're all wagging their tail. They're hand it. Bing, 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 bing. Oh, I thought I was threatened. And then we're there to serve a no trespass order, not even a warrant or anything. Hundreds of videos like that. Have you even visited coplock.org, the national site? The dog, they just walk up and shoot dogs, huh? The dogs aren't. Pretty much. The yeah. dogs aren't chasing after them. Nope. No. Nope. 90% of the videos you see, there were even. It's pretty, it, pretty bad cops, huh? Just like. 30 or 40 of them already behind the fence in a contained area and they're shooting the dog before they go inside the contained area. I can't imagine that. Well, you need to watch some video, man. Get educated so you know why we exist. You guys taken? What's that? Are these videos you guys taken or videos that you uh, on the Peaceful Streets, Oath Accountability Project, um, people's, people's, people's private, private phones and first-hand accounts, things like that, but no, we, I mean, cop lock, cop lock can't be everywhere. You know, if someone's serving a no trespass order and they see a pit bull and before they want to serve the person, they're like, get the dog away from the gate. And they're like, no, go away, leave me alone, blah, blah. Pink, 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 pink. There's your kid now that you got five little children crying and bawling their eyes out. You gotta watch these videos, man, they're horrible. Well, I can't do that. But basically, when we, when I filed the, the complaint on Murdoch about that whole entire situation, he basically said police should not have a preconception, a pre-notion that they're already in danger unless there's danger. Now, in Fallujah, even if an Iraqi has a gun, okay, we're not allowed to shoot him, even if he has a gun. We have to allow them to raise that gun and pose a threat before we react. Because if we react before that happens, you're serving 15 years in Leavenworth. Now cops, they're under qualified immunity. Even if you think this flashlight and it's not going on and I raise this flashlight to point at you and you have a gun and you freaking pop four shots at me and I die, there's nothing that's gonna happen to you because you felt threatened. You see the problem with that? Now the preconception is, is, the preconceptions that are trained into police offices, that's the problem with law enforcement now. That's the problem. The preconception and pre-notion that you're, you're in danger before you even know there's danger. Now if I, I mean, by the look of the video, I'm like a quarter mile, almost a quarter mile away from you guys. I might be exaggerating a little bit, but you guys came right up to us. We did not approach you and we were doing the same thing we do in the 400 something videos that we have and that was the first bad interaction I had like that. We had another one tonight and that was like on a public sidewalk in the middle of Concord in, in the city and there were two like 12 year old kids that looked like they just graduated high school yesterday thinking they were big tough guys. And as soon as they found out who, they, who we were, they, you know, they wanted to be very condescending and jerk offs and they went and we just filed a complaint on them. And, with, the, with their L team. We were sitting there talking with him for, what, a good 30 minutes at least. Um, but uh, even the state police guy that's investigating the Murdoch thing said they, they Murdoch should not have acted that, like that. Not at all. Soon as we were identified and I said, go back to your traffic stop and just make believe we don't exist, he should have did just that. 
and that would have ended that whole conversation right there. You don't need to worry about danger unless there's danger. Well, you see reflective gear, press passes, you know, flashlights, flashlights. You know, how do I how do I know you guys don't pose a threat? I'm not allowed to pull a gun and shoot you. You know, what's up with that? What's flashlights gonna have to do? You can't see you at all. Yeah, you did. You both had flashlights on me. No, when you got a flashlight pointing back, can't see Well, I, I had it in his face, not yours. You had your flashlight on me, too. That was a long yeah. Too. Yeah. The only reason why I raised mine up to his face is because that's one of my pet peeves. The first reaction cops have, they want to flash it right in your face. That's a disrespectful thing to do. It's hard. Yeah, you're, you gotta aim it at the chest. Yeah, you gotta fucking you point else. it down. Like, and, and this, you guys come up to the, and don't, don't be alarmed, I'm just showing you something. This is what you do when you come up to the, the cruiser. May I license and registration, please? You, you don't find that disrespectful? Doesn't that bother you a little bit? <laughs> now, if you flashed it here and be like, hey, how you doing? I'm officer, blah, 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 blah. You flash it right here, you literally can see everything in the driver's seat. That's how I do it. And if, and if, and if somebody's moving over there, you just flash it on the floor. And if there's people moving on the back, flash it on the floor. It's easy. But as soon as you flash it in the face, it's, you know, Cruel and unusual punishment, man. I don't flash it in people's eyes. You know, I only do it for a little second just to see if they're redness in the eyes and what the eyes look like. That's what you do with that. But I don't, when I probe people, I don't show them. Do you, get, do, you, do you stop a lot of people that are high? I don't stop a lot. No. no. I mean, it does happen. I don't know why. Well. We, we, we are kind of lucky in this area. We don't have as much. Well, there's no way to really... I mean, if someone's doing it, they're doing it in their home, you know. And there's not a whole lot of kids walking around in groups and no, house to house. A lot of them driving around. Uh, oh, you burn cruises. I've never, I never smoked a day in my life. I never even drank a day in my life. I can't even tell you what an alcoholic beverage tastes like. I have kind of like a OCD thing about it because of my family and shit. Um, I get nervous and kind of weirded out every time I'm around alcohol, beer, or parties or whatever. Um, I don't never smoked a cigarette a day in my life. Mountain Dew is my my vice and girls. That's about it. Mountain Those Dew. two things, yeah, it's gonna catch up to me someday. Mountain Dew, well, too much sugar. Hey, but I'm telling you, man, it don't make you sterile. Cause I got plenty of kids. <laughs> <laughs> it does not make you sterile. Is that five zero right there? He's just sitting there. Is he coming this way? You get around. Probably like wondering, like, what the fuck? <laughs> He's like, what the hell? What's going on? Yeah, I don't, I don't see the, uh, the 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 whole drug thing. I don't understand why people do it. But I think I think cannabis should be legalized in some way. Driving, I'm not so sure if they can drive with it. I'm not with the free staters on that one. I think if you're impaired, you're impaired. I think if you're impaired with anything, you should be. Oh yeah. I don't know what's worse, alcohol or marijuana. I would probably have to bet that mar uh, alcohol is worse than marijuana. I think alcohol is worse than heroin. It kills more people. Alcohol, you know. Marijuana, you don't have domestics and shit like that. Oh yeah, because they're all freaking relaxed. If they all smoked, they probably wouldn't fight. Probably. <laughs> Just give them pizza in, in a bowl. It's <laughs> all Narcan shit, it's not helping us out. Oh yeah, I know. Half of these heroin addicts, they're in there like 12 times before they finally kick the habit. Yeah. Do you, do you guys have a lot of domestics in these small communities out here? more financial problems and shit because of the property taxes? It's, we don't have it that often, but it's usually, it's usually people that are going through divorce or shit like that. We, yeah. don't, we don't get it too often. We used to get it quite often a few years back, but knock on one, we haven't had too many domestics over. They say uh, law enforcement is the number one occupation with the highest domestic violence rate. 
I would say that, that and probably military, because you're high stress all the time. Yeah, I was talking to uh, Officer Thompson, who's not a big fan of mine, and I'm not a big fan of his, but he was chit-chatting with me uh, during, during the school opening at Keene State College, and he's saying, this job's taxing, JP. I mean, you don't even understand what we go through. I'm like, I've been out here for four years doing this, watching you guys. I know, it's, I know the shit you guys deal with, but you make an oath, and you consciously took this job, making an oath, to uh, withstand ex extreme public scrutiny. That's part of your policy when you get oath. You're a public official, man, and you gotta, you gotta take it. You're, tra you're trained and you watch plenty of videos and you're rehearsed on some of the things that can happen. And that's a personal decision. It's a personal responsibility thing. So if you wanna be happy the first year and then become a dick your fifth year, which you're, you're the, one of the biggest pricks on the force, um, you know, you, you should pick a different occupation, man. If it's taxing that much, man, quit. Resign. I mean, in five years in, you could probably get a, a job anywhere if you were a cop that long, you know? If you resign and you don't get fired or something, you know? But in small communities like this, I... I you know, they, got, they deal with college kids on a daily basis and massive amount of overdoses. I mean, Keene's getting crazy. The shit that they deal with, and I, I totally understand that. But when you see, you know, from our standpoint, you see a cop grab a, you know, a 19-year-old girl for an open container, and she's refusing to give you the open container, and you see one of the cops grab her by the hair and drag her down the freaking stairs from a college house. You know, it's stuff like that that gets public pissed off. I don't really care if he has a, a bad home life or not. That doesn't... Where's that kid's at? Keene. Keene State College. I saw it happen on Blake Street um, just after that big, that big push where uh, the college paid like $280,000 extra to have extra details for the first four weeks, which is the first school opening after the riots. Um, so the first four weeks of the school opening, they had Surrey, um, Troy um, and four state police officers in town, um, extra people from the sheriff's department and extra team police um, do what they call the black box, which is Winchester Street, Wilson Street, Blake Street, and Davis Street, which are all pretty much off-campus college houses. And they used to have parties like almost every single house. This year, they're showing up at these college houses, 13 cops plus, just for a noise complaint. And literally, they lost 188 students in transfers because of the big, big police presence near the beginning of the year. Kids are saying it's no, no longer fun to be there. And oh, and, and then you hear the police side of it saying, oh, they, it shouldn't be all about parties. I'm like, you can't tell me right now because I know a couple of cops there went to Franklin Pierce. I'm like, you can't tell me right now you didn't party at Franklin Pierce. I know you're full of shit. And then Kevin Bach is like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I partied my ass off. <laughs> You know, I'm like, so you got to bring that, bring that humanity back into you and you realize that these guys are just kids. Yeah, well, you know? that's not our fault, though. That was case law where a couple of kids, cops were being buddy-buddy to a couple of kids, took the beer away from them, sent them home, and kept them coming back out. And they ended up getting behind a wheel in the car and they died. Well, that, that will happen anyway. A couple of cops got sued from it. Well, even if they give them an open container fine or a noise complaint, which is just a city ordinance, that doesn't mean they're not going to go back in the house, drink more, jump in the car, and it's going to happen anyway, whether that fine is given or not. Well, usually when uh, they usually have to be released to their parents now. Somebody that will take care of them. Or they get PC'd. Yeah, PC'd to try to keep them from going right back out. Yeah, they PC'd you know, a lot gonna of... start meeting up like this a lot, Think you guys can bring me a coffee? Open. <laughs> you, it just happens you're on almost every time we're coming back from car. We actually had an investigation. We we're finishing up on an investigation in Manchester. Um, yesterday, um, police were arresting some kid named Angel Ramos, and uh, a couple came out of their house to video record the cops, and the cops actually took their phone and said, we need this for evidence, and that's a no-no. 
um, and it threatened the lady if uh, they don't give him the phone that they're going to hit him with obstruction of justice. And believe it or not, somebody from the second floor was videotaping that. <laughs> So we had to go to the police department, talk to the sergeant, show them the videotape I had today of, of uh, me talking to the sergeant today that yelled at me on the phone thinking I was like one of the kid's family members or something. He thought that like, this cop lock thing was full of shit and <laughs> basically thought I was a joke. And then I sent him a bunch of links and you know, never heard back from him, so we had to go back in person to do it in person, and the sergeant we talked to was really, really nice, Brown, Brown I think it was, um, and we got that on tape and tried to record and cross our eyes, but yeah, we'll bring you a coffee, man, if we're around. No gratuity. It's a uh, civilian to civilian. <laughs> and, I, and I won't record it. You know it would be better if I bring you like a monster coffee like a mocha or a mean bean no well it's closed you know you can open it when you get it no the coffee yeah the mean beans are pretty good um, there's not too much sugar in it they're really good and the uh, the mocha is pretty decent too um, they basically it's the same thing as uh, the Starbucks um, hey, let me uh let me show you I got a the can right here. Ah. Yeah, because his gun's on, your gun on. And this is called Mean Bean, Monster Coffee. Yeah, it's just coffee. There's not a whole lot of sugar in it. But, uh, it's not going off now, is it? Vitamin B6, riboflavin, B2, calcium, 5%. 100% vitamin B6, 100% vitamin B3, riboflavin B2, 100%, phosphorus, 19%. Not much sugar. It was loaded with uh, potassium. But yeah, these, these are really good. Yeah, these are much better than the energy drinks I can't fucking drink, man. Those things make me want to throw up. And uh, don't ever drink Red Bull. You'll have an aneurysm. But these are pretty good. They're just coffee. They're the same shit in them as the Starbucks ones. I used to drink the monster drinks, and then I started reading up on it like that. Yeah, right. It'll make your balls shrivel up, man. <laughs> Half of your family's dead right there. All right, man, you have a good night, man. Be safe. You guys come up every uh, Saturday? Um, we were going to hit Tilton in uh, the Laconia, Wears Beach area and then work our way back. Um, but we decided to do the Manchester thing because that kind of hit us in the face. Um, and because I probably wouldn't have done it if that guy didn't start running his mouth on the phone today. But he pissed me off so much I wanted to do it in person. Um, and that's basically it. Um, there's a sergeant at the Keene Police Department. His name's uh, Christopher Simons. He's an awesome dude, really good dude. Me and him go back and forth with the Patriots like for hours um, because we're both Pats fans. And um, he tells us, like the new officers, he says, JP's not FSP, he's not a free stater, but he's like a fucking bee's nest. If you just leave him the fuck alone, you'll never have to deal with him. <laughs> Now, if you stop breaking the law and, and step over the lines and try to interfere with... One day, this is a funny story real quick. I got unarrested one night. Um, I was videotaping a new, new guy. He was from a different... I think he was from... Um, he used to be a Marlboro cop. And he transferred to Keene, so he's not used to us. He actually arrested me for interfering with government administration by videotaping a traffic stop. When he brought me to the police department, T.J. Durandal, sergeant there, he's kind of a dickhead, but he came, comes out and he stops in the booking room, and their booking room's pretty big. They have, actually have a middle kiosk that's like a big square, and they have like a fingerprint thing here, and they have like a desk sergeant or 
or a cop in the middle that takes care of all the paperwork and shit and they got these metal benches. They actually didn't handcuff me or anything. They just sat me down the metal benches. He comes into the room and he stops and goes, literally, he goes, what the fuck's JP here for? And the cop's like, oh, I'm arresting for uh, interfering with government administration and maybe pending a, 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 a warrant ticket. I guess that's what they call it, a warrant ticket for uh, disorderly conduct. He goes, was he video recording this? During, during your your um, your traffic stop on Blake Street, he goes, yeah. He goes, get his bike, get his stuff, and get him the fuck out of here. And bring him back where you came from. <laughs> he says, I do not want to deal with him. I'm like, thanks. He goes, don't thank me. I got nothing to say to you. He walks out of the room. <laughs> that happened uh, uh, two summers ago. Funny shit. That cop's no no longer there. He was only there for like a year. I guess he's gonna become a lawyer or something in Manchester or some shit. The cop was? Yeah, Mar and a former Mar. In fact, uh, Sergeant Simons used to be a Marlboro cop, but I think he's got a law degree in um, criminal criminal justice. He used to be on the drug task force, and I know Matt Griffin's back on the New Hampshire drug tra task force because I haven't seen him on the bikes. Usually he was on the bikes, and he used to pass out open container fines all fucking night long in the college neighborhood. I haven't seen him in months. And then when I was doing don't take a plea outreach at the court uh, two Thursdays ago, he was sporting a long beard, you know, short shirt, and you could see his badge and gun on. So I know he's back on the drug chat, drug task force, obviously. Um, I'm like, hey, Matt, he goes, turns around and walks in, talks to the county attorney, uh, Gene Killam, I think is her name. And they brought him into a separate room, and I didn't see him for the rest of the morning. So secretive, secretive shit. All those spec ops bullcrap thinking they're all SEAL team members and shit. You guys, do you guys have any detectives here? You guys just do all your own uh, investigative work? Yeah. That's pretty cool. You married? I am. You are? I am. No, I'm not. Oh, no wonder you're falling asleep. I got a fiance, but I'm not married. Well, what's the date? I don't know. You don't know? She no. knows. She knows. We got other stuff going on right now. Oh yeah. She be really supportive. Yeah. Of being a cop and stuff. You get her scared. Huh? You get her because of the way you were talking earlier. You think like everybody's gonna shoot you. No, she. You, she's she gets scared. Gets nervous because she sees everything that goes on. Oh. She knows I'm in a small town. Well. If, you can look at cop lock another way too. You got two people watching your back. I've jumped in. Um, in fact, it was uh, Jennifer Ramey, a, a woman cop, a year ago. Uh, two college kids actually grabbed her. And I jumped in, freaking grabbed one of the kids and she was able to overpower the other one. And, and that's when like the rest of them showed up. And she was really, really, really thankful that we were there. She goes, man, I'm glad you guys were there. And, and, uh, because a lot of people just stand there and watch. No, I'm not, I'm not going to let it fucking call it. E either way, I might not have a whole lot of respect for how the training is. And I think the whole law enforcement community needs to be changed of 110% overhaul with uh, the way they treat public. And I'm not, I'm not collectivizing you in small communities like this. But usually with the bigger, bigger cities, they do not treat people very nice. Um, but on, I, I, I wouldn't want to see even a cop I dislike get hurt. Now, I can't stand Matt Griffin and when his lapel mic fell off and got wrapped in his bike and he fell over. I went over to help him and I actually felt really bad. And I don't even like him. Uh, I don't, I don't want to see, yeah, that was a fucked up situation. It, I, it was kind of funny like when it happened, but the way he fell, it wasn't, it wasn't too pretty. He was actually out of business for a few weeks. And then there was another case where I got uh, subpoenaed for my video, um, where some girl was saying that um, Timothy Pelequin, who was a pretty, pretty well-known cop in Keene, said she groped him, uh, she, that he groped her and reached down her address and shit and I had the whole interaction on tape and it actually pretty much you know showed that he didn't do anything like that 
I mean, it saved his fucking career. And he talks about it to this day. He goes, yeah, man, JP had that video, man. If that video wasn't there, just the suspicion of it, I would have been fucked, you know? I mean, I probably wouldn't have lost my job because it's her word against mine, but, you know, the, you know, that's still out in the air. You 357? That state police? Bo? You getting Bo? Yeah. We were getting Bo earlier, weren't we? Yep. Yeah. Bo's on there in that county. Yeah, we went through there. And uh, went through Bo and hooks it on the, on the way to Concord tonight. No, I'm there in that county. Jesus. When are you on till? Four? Six. Six? Jesus, man. You do this every night? Every night. Till I six. Have, I have a few days off. Oh. Yeah. You have any children? Yeah, four of them. Four? Shit. Two of hers, two of mine. Yeah, I got um four of hers and two of mine, so it's six all together. Oh, I only have mine half of the week though, and her, she's got three elementary school kids, so they're in school most of the day. But yeah, um, she's, a, she's a nurse, so she has your hours. Sometimes she doesn't get back to like fucking 4.30 in the morning.